Today, I'm reviewing the Freedom Keyboard by Zergotech. This is a great keyboard, but not necessarily the best keyboard for you. I've got another split keyboard, which is the Ergodox EZ, but unlike the Ergodox EZ, the Freedom is pretty easy to get to grips with and get moving with straight away. It's a very opinionated keyboard in that you can see just by looking at the, the keycaps, it has a very strong opinion of where it wants the keys to be and how it wants you to use this keyboard. Having used both the Ergodox and the Freedom, I think it's clear that both keyboards serve different users. The Ergodox suits tinkerers far better Whereas the Freedom, on the other hand, is far better for people who they want an ergonomic keyboard, but they want sensible decisions that have already been made for them. More simplistically, you can bend the Ergodox to suit how you want your keyboard to work. Whereas I think the opposite is true for the Freedom. It's a case of you fitting in with how the, the Freedom wants you to work. And that is not necessarily a bad thing. Now, like the, the Ergodox, it's a split keyboard, there's a cable joining the two halves, but unlike the Ergodox, you can see here, there's no, there's no option there to pull that joining cable out. It's, it's a very thick cable, and that is not coming loose very easily, but if you want the, the keyboard wider than sort of, as I put this down here, that's just sort of shoulder width apart for me. So if you're a, a bigger person, you've got wider shoulders, you might find the, the freedom doesn't go as wide as you would like. That's just on the edge of where I would like it. I certainly wouldn't want it to be any any further in together than that. One of the best thing about these split ergonomic keyboards is that you can separate them out and be very comfortable with your, your shoulders in line with either half of the board. So it's just on the edge there. I'm also, if, you, if you're the sort of person that likes tinkering with keyboards, adding new cables, um, you know, you want a braided cable or an aviator cable, that sort of thing. Obviously the, the Freedom is not a good choice in that respect because it's hardwired into the board itself. The big difference from something like the Ergodox that you get with the Freedom is you can see these um, built-in wrist pads here, which there's a separate sliding wrist panel, which we'll come to shortly, which you can swap out for these. But out of the box, these built-in keyboard rests are phenomenal, very comfortable. It puts your, your hands at a very pleasing um, ergonomic position. It's very comfortable to just rest your wrist there and, and go for it. Now, make no mistake about it, the Freedom is a premium product. Everything about it is is high quality from the, from the packaging to all the accessories that it comes bundled with. Um, and perhaps the thing that stands out more than anything, this is without doubt the best feeling typing out of the box of a keyboard I've ever used. I genuinely wasn't sure when I first started using it and typing away. I wasn't sure what keys were in the keyboard and as soon as I started typing on it I was adamant I had to go and find some key switches the same as these because they were so good. It turns out they are Kale Box Brown switches which I do have in the Ergodox here. But you can tell very different sort of sound there but they f they just feel absolutely solid in here and it turns out having gone and researched it a little bit these are modified box brown switches that Zergatech have had made specifically for this board and whether it's just in the switches themselves whether it's the structure of this board it's still a you know a, a plastic board like the, the Ergo Docs is but it feels like a you know this is a sturdy bit of kit you could take somebody out with this, no mistake. I've not tried, but I'm pretty sure you could. When you look at the board, it's got nice, very nice, tasteful keycaps, but they are, I'm almost certain these are surface printed keycaps, so I imagine over time they are gonna wear out, but you can get replacement sets. Um, it looks a little bit, the aesthetic, whilst it's very neat, very well considered, it looks a little bit like the sort of um, editing keyboard you would get with an NLE like um, like a Final Cut Pro keyboard from the 2000s or whatever. The layout is very good. You've got some things which you might be familiar with if you use Colmat, like you've got the backspace over here 
where you typically find something like the caps lock. You've got these nice chunky keys all on the bottom row. You've got a lovely, that's the caps lock key. And for all the, the different lock keys that you've got along the bottom here, you get a lovely sound and an LED up at the top there, which I've got to be honest, now I've heard that beep, <laughs> I want it on every keyboard. Every keyboard should have a beep like that when you put the caps lock on and off. I think a plus point for the Freedom is that compared to something like the Ergo Docks, within a few hours you're kind of away and going on this. You haven't got the, the odd thumb clusters to get used to like you have with the Ergo Docks. So if you if you want something that's just going to be a, a good ergonomic product that you can plug in and get going with straight away, this is probably the choice for you. Unlike the Ergo Docks and some of the other split keyboards, ergonomic keyboards, the Freedom is a, a semi-orthogonal layout. So you've got the keys sort of coming down vertically, but then the, the bottom row of alpha keys is staggered slightly. I didn't find that to be a problem and I didn't really find it to be a plus either, so I wouldn't really factor that in too much. A big thing, personal to me, why I could never use this keyboard full time, is the lack of a dedicated arrow cluster. You've got the arrows, a bit like if, you used to, if you've used something like um, a happy hacking keyboard, the arrows are behind a, a layer on the keyboard, which is absolutely fine and plenty of other people prefer having the, the arrow keys behind a layer anyway, but for me, I just use them so much, I'm so used to them, I just find it a pain to not have a dedicated arrow cluster, so that's something for me which is a sort of tick in the negative box. Unlike some of the like homemade or Ergodox EZ or the Moonlander, the, the firmware for this keyboard is not open source. It's a bit more like the WAS boards where it's got macro programmability and all the rest of it and it's got um it's got some handy cards you know th these come with it giving you sort of little shortcuts for how to to program stuff which is fine but i don't think it's as good as something like qmk or via where you can do the the layouts on the fly you know and program the board to do whatever you want with it i think doing something like um a colmac layout would be a bit tedious in this regard because you'd have to be making a, a macro for every key and I'm, I don't think that would be much fun. As to whether you could do Colmac with these keys, they are, um, let me just show you that there, that's the sort of, so you can keep, that's the sort of profile of the key, so. If you wanted to do, if you wanted to do Colmac or Dvorak, you could probably do it at a squeeze, but I don't think the keycaps are perfect for that when you're changing um, the rows around. And I don't know how easy it would be. I suspect it'd be quite difficult to get anything like a DSA profile that would let you get a completely Colmac layout there. Or Dvorak, or Workman. You've also got on here, you've got, um, You've got these little feet so you can alter the oops. You can alter the incline here of the board, you know, so you can tip it either way, backwards, forwards, and whatnot. It's it's a bit sort of binary. These, these don't click to different positions, so it's a case of you either have it tilted or you don't have it tilted. It doesn't have the sort of the fine grain adjustment of something like the Ergodox or the Moonlander. The big headline feature of the Zergatech Freedom is these sliding palm rests. So I'm gonna pop those in now and show you the difference with those. So in the box you get two sets of these different pads. So you've got a sort of, get that up to the camera there, you've got that kind of thickness. So you've got that kind of thickness pad. And you've also got like sort of maybe maybe double that kind of height. Don't be a complete spanner and try and prise these out with a knife. It gives you a kind of little plectrum in the box so you can lever these keypad, these big fat wrist pads out. And then the idea is these, the, 
the closest thing I can think of to these sliding pads is a bit of like if you've ever played air hockey at the cinema or you know an amusements that's the kind of feel of these pads and the idea is you just get the other one in here a minute so in fact I'm gonna put the, the smaller ones on first so you pop your pads on and the idea is you you lean your wrists in there and then you glide around the keyboard like so which for me personally I didn't really take much from it I'm, I'm lucky in that I don't have problems with RSI wrist pains anything of that sort I just like the the feel of being able to open your shoulders up a little bit as you're typing this is why I'm a fan of these split boards but I'm lucky enough to not have any actual um, medical problems with hands and fingers besides the the fact I'm missing a finger um, so these for me I actually found having used them for two or three days I went back to just sticking the the main normal wrist pads in which as I've said before are excellent and I also found that as I was using it I don't know if if it was just me but because I'm I'm often using um, graphics applications like sketch and figma and the like although there's an excellent built-in mouse functionality in this keyboard you can swap to a layer and you've got mouse keys built in there so you can do everything mouse wise this is like the complete input device if you like but the problem is if you're using something like sketch or figma and maybe use a, a wacom tablet or a, um, a trackpad or you've just got a nice mouse that you like to use a lot or need to use a lot what i would find is i'd lift the you see that i'd lift my hand across to get to my mouse and i'd get this clatter as the the pad had stuck to my wrist which was just really irritating so it wasn't long before I canned those off now that's not a reflection on the fact that this doesn't work because plenty of people will testify that this is advancement if you like in terms of ergonomics but for me I didn't find it useful and I ended up putting the, the standard pads back in so if you're doing data entry all the time and you don't need to be lifting your wrist up all the time and you, you can concentrate on just having your hands on the home row doing your thing, I think they would be absolutely fantastic. But for the sort of work that I do, it, it just wasn't adding anything. How can we summarize this keyboard? I would say if you want a very high quality, all-in-one ergonomic input device, this should absolutely be on your shortlist. It's very well thought out. These fat keys at the bottom, the fact that you've got these locks to switch to, like you've got a, a num lock key here to give you the numbered layer and it's color coded. A lot of thought has gone into this keyboard. If you want an all-in-one that does everything and you're happy to buy into the, the freedom way of doing things, this is a great keyboard. The key switches are Chef's kiss. Nothing better I've come across. It, it makes beeping noises. On the downside, I would say the lack of removable cables might be a problem for you. The, the programming functionality, whilst works well enough, it just isn't as smooth as a, a web interface or a separate program that you can configure the keyboard on yourself. And then another big thing for me personally is just the lack of arrow keys on their own dedicated set of keys. This is a very expensive product, but it's very well considered, very well made, and if you have any um, medical issues regarding wrists, hands, then this should certainly be a consideration, especially if you feel you could dedicate for some, from something like the, the sliding palm rests. If you're the sort of person that likes to tinker a lot, you're into RGB lighting on your keys, of which this has no lighting. Um, or you want to do funky things with your cables, you might want to replace the cables or have these two sections further apart. Or you would like to replace the keycaps with, with different keycaps. This is not the board for you. You need to be looking elsewhere at one of the many other split ergonomic keyboards. So, I hope that was useful. Any questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.